Well, how you doing, YouTube? Joey here, Daily Vinyl. It is time to talk about the king. Yes, it's Elvis Presley, and we did feature this on the Stax debut series. I believe that was back in May, but that is definitely not enough Elvis in the 365 series, especially as I have always really loved Elvis. Uh, high school, I sort of found an appreciation for what he did, his craft, uh, the awe-inspiring mark he left in the music career, rock and roll music, country music, sort of rebranding the foundations of rhythm and blues music, uh, making it more accessible while still being very open-minded and not just being a thief like someone like Pat Boone, but rather a true performer. Um, and although it has been a minute, I find that Elvis is somebody that you can sort of take out brush the dust off the shelf and uh, you know get reacquainted with uh, every now and again and each time it's a little bit better than the last if you will and so as it is Christmas uh, the sounds of Christmas music definitely brings blue 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 Christmas like Elvis coming on the radio a lot more often uh, in popular circles but I have satellite radio in my car and I've been listening to Elvis radio a lot for the last week and a half or two like uh, some scary amount, and uh, about a week in, a week ago, they had played a track. Um, it was specifically "I Can't Help Falling in Love" with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, and I thought that that was really neat. I hadn't heard that rendition, so I did some research. And what did I find? Well, apparently, last October, as well as this October, there has been two full-length releases done where. Just all sorts of work goes into taking these uh, archival vocal tracks of Elvis and bringing in either some new artists and the Philharmonic Orchestra and really great production team and putting out uh, a twist to spin on the works themselves. Now, I will have to say that we're going to talk about both albums, which are If I Can Dream, the first one from October 2015, and then this year's um, The Wonder of You. Uh, again in October, so a year apart. Both of them highly successful, and I think it's interesting to note that The Wonder of You being the 92nd uh, posthumously, or however you say that word, uh, basically released after Elvis's death uh, in 77, uh, is the first tipping point beyond having the same number of releases while he was alive to while he's uh, no longer with us. So. That's a lot of releases in and of itself. That's 184, uh, 183, excuse me. But that means now we're on the side of there's been more releases since his death than there were prior. But just an interesting piece of trivia, something like uh, the weird facts they throw out on NFL Sunday or something like that. But I thought that was interesting to note. So these tracks sort of go... Uh, walking different lines, and I would say that if we talk specifically about um, If I Can Dream, it really pushed the envelope for making Elvis appeal to the classical space. Uh, even made number one on the U.S. Billboard's classical charts, which is the first time uh, Elvis's name has made it on the classical charts, which should come as no surprise, but being a man of many genres of music, just one more accolade, one more collection for his roster, I suppose. Um, interesting to note, because I think Elvis was always a man of big vibrato, a man of big performances, a big sort of uh, spectacle to see, and he liked that sort of over-the-top thing. Uh, you know, you can't sort of shortchange a man who goes by the king for something along those lines. Now, growing up in Memphis, he was all about the gospel and those things, and I think it sort of lends itself to the space. But orchestra music in its own way, although rigid and harsh and very structured, has a very fluid sound. It's very wave-like in the way you sort of ride those out. And I think Elvis's vocal, a lot of the time, was like that. It's very relaxed. He's you know, could stutter through a line or mmm through a line or just sort of take things in stride. And his pacing, um, especially early on uh, in his career that he sort of developed over time, transcends a, a whole lot of things that are now more popular or more accustomed to modern music, but were definitely unique uh, early on. So he sort of inspired a lot of change uh, in the modern music world, and I think it's still interesting that you're taking 
or the world is taking that and, and rebranding it and re-envisioning it. And I guess that just takes the, the Elvis namesake uh, that much further. You know, it's not over yet. We're still finding new things to do with what he left in. And I think that that's really cool. Um, overall, uh, I think that the first record, If I Can Dream, is, is a little bit more done once over on the classical. They were really going for that. They really wanted it to stand out as the Royal Philharmonic is here. Here's all these differences. Here are the changes. And I don't know if it was for the lack of timing. You know, it did so well. They wanted to put out another one on the second album. Or just wanting to uh, tone it down a little bit. I think that um, The Wonder of You isn't as full-on classical. But all the same, The Wonder of You is really good too. Um, I like that that is the last track, is the title track on both albums, and they're both very strong standout tracks. Um, and, you know, it is sort of, le you know, longing for some of those big vocal numbers. You know, if you hear some of the live renditions of Suspicious Minds or, or some of the more raw, uh, you know, digger kind of style tracks, and I don't mean like digging the crates, although this is a vinyl channel. I mean like those who dig for rarities and b-sides, finding some of the the more, you know, recorded in Graceland tracks where you hear Elvis's really unadulterated vocal. He has some brilliant flaws in some of his singing notes that made his sound. And because the production value on these albums is so just brilliantly done, so perfectly done, it, it's exquisite, you lose that. Now, it, neither here nor there, it's not taking away from the value of the songs or the, the records themselves, they're still really good. It's just that robust quality of uh, the occasional really letting it out Elvis that is sort of lacking at times, but if you listen to um, If I Can Dream, uh, the second to last song, An American Trilogy, trilogy is over the top, uh, grandiose track, uh, and the orchestration really works back into that. Tr song really lent itself to the space quite well, if you ask me, and you get some of it there. So longing for that bite of just a little bit of gnar in the uh, growlier side of his vocal, and, and you kind of hear some of that. Um, you know, uh, some of the transformations, though, however, uh, throughout both records, uh, just super brilliant how they're able to take these old songs and make them brand new again. I, I, I love that 99% of these songs are songs that most people have heard enough times to sing along with, but it's like hearing them all over again in a new uh, fixation. And they do all sorts of things with it. Everything you could think of in the you know, stylizing way, uh, little bits of throwback to uh, Elvis's long uh, movie uh, career, his cinematic stuff. Uh, I think they do a version of Fever, uh, You Give Me Fever, with Michael Bublé, uh, and it's just got this very James Bond-esque uh, sound to it. And I know that that song already had that sort of waltzy, walking bass line, which always gave it sort of its own thematical quality, but just the way that they put uh, all of the uh, additional sounds in there, the uh, orchestration and really lends it to a James Bond sound, and, and I think that that's cool. I think it's just more homage in popular culture, uh, you know, more tips of the hat and how it all comes together. The melting pot that is uh, the, uh, I guess, cultural identity of rock and roll sort of getting mixed up within itself. I mean, this is made at Abbey Road Studios in London with the Royal Philharmonic using a Canadian singer and an American singer writing and recording songs and just blending and blurring those lines. It's very universal, it's very globally friendly, and uh, well, well received. I think the entire uh, thing that's happened between both these albums has sold many, many copies already and, and put uh, Elvis's name sort of on the charts again in the last few years. So I think that that's really cool. Um, all things aside, the arrangements all, all together are, are pretty spot on. There's a few times when I'm like reaching for them to do more with it and maybe a couple of moments where I'm like, did they, you know, even change much? You know, that's sort of neither here nor there though because overall these are both really well done uh, collections, ensembles of, you know, some of the best songs Elvis has ever put out there and just reworked in a really imaginative way. Uh, I, I have to point out, uh, I really, really liked uh, In the Ghetto, which is a song from Elvis that 
everybody seems to know, uh, thanks to Jim Carrey, if you're younger, or uh, in the past, just for its popularity as a song. It's uh, got a really good, catchy hook, uh, and if you hear it once, you kind of know it, but they worked it out really well uh, on If I Can Dream, and I think that that's, that's neat. Um, memories on uh, The Wonder of You is really strong, as well as Just Pretend. Just Pretend is the first one on uh, The Wonder of You that really stood out to me as sort of the timeless variation of itself, adding in the orchestration and making it a little bigger than it was. Um, and really cool, they sort of uh, have an alternative take, if you get the non-UK edition, uh, with Helene Fischer, the uh, German pop star, beautiful woman, uh, on there as well. Uh, and it's a little... Little too much, if you ask me. I like just Elvis on there, but it, it's nice too. Uh, just pretend one of the standout tracks of the Wonder of You, as well as Memories, uh, Suspicious Minds, always been a great Elvis song and uh, the country classic, Always on My Mind, really worked out well uh, in the space. And I think Always on My Mind is one of those songs that could be recorded nine million times by nine million different artists and nine million different genres, and it would never be a bad song. It's just so well written. So. Um, you know, there's some of that. Uh, and of course, If I Can Dream, you know, it's it's full of great ones. I think they did a good job of pegging some of the popular ones without going straight for it. And I definitely think uh, The Wonder of You, they sort of just said, well, which ones were left that people probably really wanted uh, on that and, and, and added them there. And I believe you can get all of it together as a comprehensive box set because if you listen to one, you might as well listen to both and it really flows like one album if you do that and uh, that's why we're talking about both right now. I'm sort of blurring the lines between them because essentially it's like one really long album. Now, um, if you have never really gotten into Elvis, I don't know if this is the most uh, appropriate jumping off place, but if you are into the holiday season and the holiday music and maybe you've had enough Jingle Bell Rocks already uh, or you're just kind of done with Nat King Cole and Andy Williams, that's okay. I think these records specifically are great to put on right now because of their classical nature. They have like a lot to offer uh, this time of year uh, and that's awesome, but then they also can be listened to year-round. So if you're looking for something to sort of sink your teeth into between now and Christmas, check out these two wonderful albums with uh, Elvis and the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. If I Can Dream and The Wonder of You, both brilliantly done. I'm happy to include them here in the 365 series. I'd love to know what you think of them. Please drop me a line below. Let me know what you thought of the albums. I'd love to hear from you. If you get bored, find me on social media. I can be uh, hit up on Facebook at backslash Daily Vinyl Online. Or just search it in the box, it'll come up. Or on Instagram, I'm at daily underscore vinyl. And of course, right here on YouTube, all the video updates. We're almost done with the 365 of this series this year. Got some big things in plan uh, for 2017. So subscribe to the channel, get all the updates, hunt and peck around, find some things you like, and uh, you know what? Stay connected. All right, very much love. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, all those things. Take care.